Howdy all you delicious people. I'm here today to review Wrong Turn 2003. I say that because simply there have, weirdly enough, been seven movies of Wrong Turn. And I'm like, wait a minute, so... <laughs> seven films? Like, not only six different films, but then I guess there was like a remake done like at the end of all this. And I'm kind of just scratching my head just going like... How have there been seven movies of this? Was the movie easy to put together? Was it a was it an easy movie to write? Seven other or, or six other films after this one? Like I'm just like okay, like I guess like sci-fi like probably uh, took this and just ran with it, or because uh, I think this might have been a sci-fi movie. I don't know, um, but whoever had this or took this or whatever. Uh, and ran with it like hey man like you just <laughs> you just made a real uh a real franchise of this whole thing seven films wow um maybe this movie was cheap like really cheap to be made it'll be interesting to kind of thumb through the franchise and otherwise just understand how like oh yeah i can see how they could have made a billion of these movies uh, because really, like, at the end, it just kind of got into a smaller and smaller and smaller budget, probably. I would have have to have assessed. Um, but yeah, so, it also is kind of interesting in the film. We have, uh, two characters called Evan and Francine. Kind of like the stoner ash like characters in this movie, where, coincidentally, these, this, these two people eventually also... We're in the Dawn of the Dead remake. So I'm wondering if like they ended up getting like picked up from that film and put in here. Or maybe these two uh, actors and actresses like kind of just go to the same auditions together and get the same roles coincidentally. Um, or maybe they're just a couple in real life. Uh, I, I don't know. Anyways, so uh, it's probably just a huge coincidence or probably whoever was to work on Dawn of the Dead also like was like, hey, we're casting for this movie. All right, let's go into it <laughs> or, or vice versa because uh, I don't know uh, year wise, whatever. Anyway, so pushing on. So going into wrong turn, how would I feel about this film? Uh like, to me, I would say that this movie is to just kind of deserve, like, a solid, like, it's an okay film. Like, I, uh, I could feel like this is a movie that at some points does some interesting things. Like, when you have killers that are to have, like, a bow and arrow or to just kind of have unique weaponry uh for this film compared to any other uh then i could praise these people for that and that's what i'm gonna do is just praise uh these people for the fact that it's like thank god it's not just a kitchen knife or just some like machete or <laughs> like they go into having some unique kind of weaponry which makes this movie its own thing um and there isn't like three different villains that all have the exact same weapon, they change it up, and I can applaud them for that. Um, as well as just this, like, beginning cast choice uh, for this film, um, I thought was really good. Uh, I thought, like, you have a lot of characters here that eventually went on to do a number of good things. Uh, even the killers uh, went on to do a number of good things. Like, the guy who ends up playing Three Finger in this, like, went on to, like, do... Uh, the so the show Supernatural where he was like the Reaper in that show and all kinds of other good stuff. So one thing that I'm probably not going to know or understand uh, reasonably in this film is what killer ends up doing what. Because <laughs> I don't know who killer had specifically the bow and arrow in this movie, uh, which killer had certain like kind of weaponry or whatever. Um... Like, I didn't really quite understand that part because I assumed, like, basically all of the killers had the same kind of weaponry on them. But I don't know uh, who had specific what. And plus, also, it seemed like two of the killers looked the exact same, in all honesty. Um, 
But yeah, so there's going to be some muddied water into and when we get to the whole like killing aspect of this movie. But um, really, it seems that also this movie kind of doesn't leave it a mystery of who is going to make it at the end of the film. <laughs> There are some times where I think movies can random it up where all of a sudden the two people you would not think would be the ones that last at the end, that last at the end. But this one kind of obviously tells you like, oh, well, these two people are obviously going to make it at the end of this because they kind of set them up to be that way. Um, that's the only thing that I hate about horror movies is the obvious setup to just know like, oh, well, this one's going to survive at the end. I wish that they could randomize it up to where you would not think in your life that all of a sudden so-and-so person is going to make it on the end. Like, there's a lot of times where it's obviously going to have to be the female because that's always the rule. And so you always either want there to be like some kind of like, of course, like either other female character or other male character kind of a, alongside instead of just having the one uh, the one female character, but that's always how it breaks down every single time. Um, you would have thought, you would have really just thought, though, that uh, Chris Flynn would have just ate it. <laughs> this guy, uh, this character who is uh, Desmond, um, uh, Chris is just going and... Like, really trying to help a lot of people out, and then he gets a bullet for his troubles. And you would think that this guy, out of everyone, is going to die or eat it or whatever. Uh, but coincidentally enough, like, considering, I guess, the, all the risks that he ended up having to forcibly do in this movie, uh, things might have paid off for this character. So, with that said... Uh, so this movie is a okay enough movie. Uh, like to me, uh, it of course does have that, like a certain kind of budget to it, which is to have made it easily to make other films of this. Uh, I'm really fascinated about going into the franchise of this, <laughs> even though it'll probably be a waste of time. Um, like, I just want to see how cheaply these movies were done because that's what I'm assessing or assuming that this movie was to be, like, uh, the other films were to be cheaply done, besides this one. Because uh, it seems like you probably have to fit the bill for a certain kind of actors or actresses or whatever. Uh, but, anyways. I think it's off to the spoiler, or... No, let's go into, let's go into the teeing up thing of this movie. So, what is to actually happen? So, it seems that we end up having... Uh, Let's get to the real important part in the teeing up fashion. So it seems that we end up having a dirt road that is to coincidentally have traps uh, being placed in it. That is to try and stop people from getting anywhere further onto this specific road. It seems that uh, we, are be, uh, we are to be told by this certain gas station attendant that... There is a very convenient road to eventually save people time. And so eventually they're like, okay, let's go on this road. And so much about this movie feels like Cabin in the Woods. It, like, if you guys have ever seen Cabin in the Woods and then you've seen this movie, it feels almost one and the same. Um, but then we end up also getting to there being that there's no, like, force field wall that is to prevent people from running off. And running to safety or like eventually there ends up having like a sheriff uh, or a trooper or whoever being placed in this movie also that is to try and help people out which is just a blatant waste of time so uh, so what ends up happening is these people decide like well heck yeah I want to go into this easier road and there ends up being barbed wire placed in this road to trip people up to now force them to uh, have to just walk their way uh, to town or to whatever to eventually find like some kind of person with a cell phone somewhere or some kind of phone uh, because people don't conveniently have cell phones like during this time period. 
uh, or none of them probably would have signal, right? Because it would be perfectly in place where even if someone had a cell phone, like it wouldn't work properly. So eventually these people are to go off to eventually just continue walking uh, to eventually find this kind of disheveled home, which like to me, this is honestly reminding me of Hatchet where eventually uh, like the people in the swampland end up jumping off of their boat to try and find uh, anybody in this swamp part to eventually have a phone or something like that to help them. And then they end up stumbling into the killer's home, which is basically what ends up happening here is that all the characters eventually are to stumble onto this home to eventually find these deformed hillbillies um, all coming in and eventually tearing or pulling apart some dead body. And so that makes, of course, these characters just go like, oh crap, like, what did we stumble upon? And so eventually, like, all of these villainous characters are to all be going and uh, sleeping or resting or whatever because of their tiring day of murdering and killing people. So this group runs off to... Uh, or tries to sneak out of this house to eventually uh, have somebody awakened via some certain sound. And then we run off to eventually have certain numerous people killed along the way, uh, getting either shot, uh, getting either a bow and arrow in some part of organ of whatever, and to eventually end up having our characters one by one viciously killed Viciously and deliciously. <laughs> deliciously killed, for whatever reason. That seemed weird. Uh, but I always like to slap the word delicious because it never makes sense to me. So, with that said, uh, yeah, I think that's all that I want to talk about. And in the teeing up fashion, I kind of like told the beginning story of this movie. Uh, so we're going to go into much more detail when we get into spoilers. So with that said, let's go out of our way because it's that time to say that it is spoiler time. Spoiler time. It's about that time again to spoil this movie. So, uh, so we end up having this guy named Chris who is to desperately try and make it to this, I think, therapy appointment or some kind of appointment of some kind. And so this is a kind of a big, important guy with his big, lavish, like, car where, uh, like, we're, like, thinking, like, oh, okay, so, like, this is to be some rich guy, evidently. Uh, so, Chris is to go to this gas station, and so this gas station attendant, uh, who seems to only have one tooth to his head, uh, is to eventually tell Chris, it's like, hey, like, uh, here's a road that can probably save you some time. And so Chris is like, really? And the guy's like, well, yeah. So... Chris decides to go and take this road, and it's pretty much the, the road less traveled. So, Chris coincidentally goes and is to drive onto this dirt road, evidently doing it far too fast because he has a real uh, important meeting that he has to make it, he has to make to, uh, or he has to go to. So, Chris is driving awfully fast to eventually go and smash right into this SUV like car. And so all of a sudden Chris is to get out of his car and he's like kind of touching his neck. He's like, man, did I get whiplash? Did I get anything? And so the, uh, we have, we end up having these characters like Scott and all these other characters are like, Oh my God, like, what did you do? Like, why did you drive so fast? And Chris is like, I'm sorry. Like, hey, I'll pay for any of the damages. Um, like, I'm really sorry about this. Like, obviously, like, it's my fault. But, like, why are you guys just in the middle of the road and you guys just kind of came out of nowhere? And so we find out that uh, Scott, Carly, Jesse, Evan, Francine... Uh, all those people's cars. I don't know who exact car this actually is. Uh, we end up finding out that they were, that their uh, car was to eventually uh, 
uh, pick up this thing called barbed wire within one of its tires, and so it ended up flattening uh, this tire. And so Jesse is to go and find out Jesse, who is uh, Alyssa uh, Dushku's uh, role, of course. Like if a lot of people had seen, of course, Buffy the Vampire Slayer or Angel the shows, um, eventually you'll know that she'll be uh, or that she has been to Faith uh, or she has also been, I think, in a Big Bang Theory episode. Uh yeah, um, anyways, pushing on. Uh, she'd also been in Wrong Turn. <laughs> anyways, so, eventually they find out that this barbed wire was put there on purpose, and so they're like, well, I guess what we just have to do now is just go on a, a walkabout or whatever. They just have to start walking to eventually find the next... A uh, place where somebody could quite possibly have a phone. Because again, nobody has a cell phone during 2003. So, we have both Evan and Francine who end up hanging back. And it seems that at first they end up smoking some weed. And then all of a sudden Francine is to consistently mention uh, the stuff that they bizarrely don't have. Like, uh, supposedly they end up taking the cigarettes with them. Or they end up taking, uh, like, food with them or whatever, but they didn't. Uh, like, she's just like, um, yeah. Like, uh, she's eating Evan's power bars. She's uh, going and smoking a cigarette. So, while this group is to eventually go ahead and walk off. So, all of a sudden, we end up having Evan who just vanishes. He ends up getting out of the car for whatever reason. To eventually just absurdly vanish. And so eventually Francine is to kind of find out where the heck Evan is. Like, did he take a squat and take a pee? Like, what did he do? Uh, like, did he just wander off? What happened? So Francine is to start to stumble upon the forest. And so eventually what ends up happening to her is that eventually she ends up going and, uh, like, of course, getting killed because she ends up getting... Like, I think there is, like, uh, there's some part where she ends up getting, like, her, like, something, like, put into her mouth and was, like, choked, um, or to be brutally killed in some kind of fashion. I'd watched this movie yesterday, so I'm not gonna know every perfect, uh, small detail of things. <laughs> I apologize. But, so those characters are, of course, to be dead, sadly enough. So we push on. So eventually these characters are to continue to walk to eventually find that there is some dead end uh, to where they are walking. And so we just have both uh, Carly and Scott who are to be uh, engaged and are to... Uh, of course, uh, get ready to get married and so on and so forth. And so eventually they're just thinking about what they're going to do once they get out of here, uh, that eventually they probably want some lavish hotel or something like that. And so uh, eventually within this movie, we find out that... Uh, the real reason this whole group uh, in this uh, SUV went on this trip is because supposedly Jesse, uh, her and her boyfriend did not work out. And so eventually, like, all of her friends decided to uh, go and take this girl on this trip to eventually feel better about the fact that she ended up getting dumped. I'm like... That seems like a story that I've probably heard like a billion times over. Like, look at, like, the hatchet. <laughs> look at, like, the thing that I've just recently seen, the hatchet. Like, where there's always this horror thing where you always just end up having, like, one person who's in, who's down and out. And so their friends are, like, trying to cheer them up. And so they end up, like, taking them on this, like, adventure to kind of get their groove back, so to speak. But it really doesn't happen. Uh, so, 
Anyways, I think, uh, like, I think Chris also had some kind of story, but heaven forbid I actually know what it was. Um, like, I think Chris has had some military experience, because whenever he is to talk, he is to just kind of mention, it's like, well, um, like, hey, I, I, let's try and do some military tactic, uh, so that way we can try to, like, scare these people off. Or eventually kind of like get away or whatever. So uh, so this group of four ends up continuing to walk on to eventually find this seemingly junkyard of a house. Which is kind of uh, having a huge cluster of cars here. I'm like, why wouldn't they have just tried to see if any of these cars work? Steal one of these cars, drive off in them... Or, like, at least kind of maybe steal the gas from all of these cars. I don't know. but Like, that's just, like, the strategy in me where it's just like, well, why is it that no one is here by this house? Why is it that there's a huge cluster of cars here? Does that make sense to anybody? No. Um, is this some weird, bizarre junkyard that makes no sense? I don't know. Uh, but also, maybe none of these cars would probably also work. Because if they use the barbed wire trick on any of these other cars, more than likely none of these cars are probably going to work, sadly enough. So, eventually these people are to head in this home. We have Chris, who is consistently trying to, like, yell out to anybody to see if anybody's home. So that way nobody uh, is to all of a sudden be trespassing or whatever. Because they've hollered numerous times to eventually alerts somebody so they end up going through this house to eventually more and more kind of just be uh frightened about what they are to see this house looks kind of very strange or uh or whatever so eventually these people are to uh eventually just kind of look through the house to eventually find out that there's no phone there so they're like ah bah. so Eventually, these Hail billy esh looking uh, deformed characters eventually come back, and they're like, oh my god, like, I guess we stumbled into the wrong house. Because eventually, these uh, Hail billy demonic-looking characters uh, that have the names of Three Finger, uh, Sawtooth, and One Eye, I think is the names of all these characters, weirdly enough. So... Uh, so eventually, these characters are to haul in this dead body where they are to start to carve it up or anything like that. I'm sure they might be cannibals or something like that. Um, so eventually these, all these uh, hillbilly-ish like villainous characters eventually take a nap because they're all really tired. So eventually that gets to where the, uh, the cast all decided to start to sneak out. This group all starts to try to sneak out. And so we have this part where they're to kind of slowly but surely open this door. And then there's this screen door. And so they end up kind of slowly but surely trying to get through the screen door. We have Chris who ends up grabbing onto this one spring of this, this uh, uh, swinging door to kind of keep it from kind of like, kind of, you know what I mean. So... Uh, Chris's hand is bleeding because of him holding on to this spring. And so the characters end up sneaking out to coincidentally have Chris. By the time he ends up trying to sneak out, all of a sudden the one guy is to have his eyes opened. Uh, and so Chris just freaking runs out of there. And it just gets to the point where he's like, run out of here. Like, freaking skedaddle. Like, come on. Like, move. Because... <laughs> These guys are coming. So, all of a sudden, these characters land themselves into this junkyard of cars where eventually these villainous characters are coming. And, uh, I guess with their car or their vehicle or whatever. So, the tactic that they end up doing while these deformed hillbillies are making their way closer to these people is Chris makes this uh, assumption that, hey... How about have one person run off to the side and, like, all the rest of you guys can just run off to the vehicle 
and then eventually you can like pick uh whoever that uh person who's kind of being the decoy up and so they're like okay that sounds like a sound thing to do so eventually chris is the one who's gonna run off to be the decoy and so all of a sudden Chris is to get shot in the leg, so it's like, well, I guess he's not going to be a decoy anymore because he can't run that fast. So, all of a sudden, Scott decides that he's going to be the decoy. He ends up running off, and so Jesse and Carly end up grabbing Chris and are kind of, like, putting uh, putting him over their shoulders and running off to make it to the car while the three deformed hillbillies are running off to eventually try to get Scott to go and try to kill him off. So... Uh, Chris, Jesse, and Carly are to get to the, uh, the car and are to eventually drive off to eventually conveniently find where Scott is, luckily enough. And so what ends up happening is they're kind of like telling Scott, like, hurry up, make it into the car. And so all of a sudden, by the time that, uh, Scott is to be rather close to this car, all of a sudden we end up having a Lord of the Rings moment where all of a sudden Scott from the back of him is to get hit by three arrows and he's like oh and so he's just kind of like stumbling and whatever and so uh we just end up having these characters of like come on scott you lazy piece of sh like come on <laughs> not really knowing that this guy has three arrows into the back uh and so scott ends up going down obviously being dead and so all of a sudden, they're still waiting for Scott, even though he's a dead corpse at this point. Uh, and so eventually there is to, air, to be an arrow almost going into the uh, the one part of this car. Uh, and I was assuming that I'm like, oh my god, is someone going to get killed at this point? Or is someone going to eventually... Uh, like, is there going to be an arrow going into somebody? But luckily, I guess there wasn't. So... These characters all decide to eventually just drive off. And so what ends up happening is it seems the further and further on that these characters drive uh, to, eventually there's just consistently more and more nothing where they are to drive to. And so eventually they end up finding some, uh, some like kind of one of those like, Forest, uh, God, what is it called? Uh, when those people are to have like those for forest fire, uh, watchtower like things, um, cause they're like, cause all there is is just forest. So, uh, so these characters end up climbing onto this forest fire watchtower like thing to eventually see if there is at least some kind of phone or radio in there. And so they end up stumbling upon this really old radio. And so they end up trying to desperately call out. And so eventually they end up getting somebody, but it ends up being too loud. And coincidentally, right around the perfect time where the uh, deformed hillbilly-ish like characters end up finding them. And so this radio is way too loud. And so... All of a sudden, they am trying to eventually tell, like, the position of where they are, and they're having problems doing so, because they're like, I don't know where exactly we are. So, eventually, they kind of come up with some kind of address of some kind, and so, eventually, what ends up happening is that the, uh, the killers of this movie, we'll call them the killers instead of deformed hillbillies. That just seems weird every time I have to say that. But I don't know exactly what the title of this group is to be. Is to be. So, like, uh, you would have thought that they would have just come up with an easy name for all three of these characters, but whatever. So, eventually the killers are to go ahead and decide to burn down this watchtower. And so now... Like, we just end up having these characters that are just like, well, how about we just jump off this watchtower and just land it in the trees? So they're doing, like, the like the Rambo first blood kind of thing, where eventually they have to, like, they jump off the, like, Rambo ended up jumping off some rock to eventually land under this tree, and he ends up, like, smacking into every branch, and he's like, oh, God! It's like, it's freaking awful. 
Uh, but like, and you also had like, uh, uh, in the Falcon and the winter soldier, like the Falcon ended up, uh, trying to go and jump off this plane without a parachute. And he ends up like smacking into a number of different, uh, uh, branches and whatever. That's kind of sad. Anyways. So Chris is to realize, cause Carly is to mention that she's going to go and jump off this watchtower to smack into the trees. And Chris is like, you know what? That's actually a smart plan. I was waiting for eventually someone to eventually get skewered by something or whatever and to be killed off because they're like, oh, I'm just going to jump and just be safe. And then one person's just going to die. Uh, that's what I was thinking. But anyways, so Chris is to be the first one that jumps and he ends up conveniently uh, making onto a tree, so he's kind of waving people down as if he could actually be seen by these people. So, uh, the other girls start to make it onto the trees and kind of just grab onto these things, just kind of hang on to them for a while. So, eventually they just start hopping from tree to tree to tree, and eventually that lands us to have certain, uh, killers that are deciding to do that also, because I guess they're really good tree climbers. So, Eventually, uh, I think Three Finger ends up to be on this tree, and so he ends up taking a hatchet to uh, Carly's face and killing her off. And so now we end up having, of course, with both just Chris and Jesse who are left. So uh, Chris comes up with the plan that he wants to kind of like slingshot one of these killers to knock him off this tree so that we both Chris and Jesse can continue to climb um, through these trees without a killer present. So eventually uh, Chris is to prepare this slingshotting branch and Jesse is like, well, hey, like I can move a lot faster than you can. So how about I go and uh, like I be like the decoy for you to eventually go and hit this character. So Jesse goes off into this one certain branch and like, I'm just immediately assuming that Jesse could probably die here, but I'm like, but wait a minute, she's technically the final girl. So that's not going to happen. So Jesse ends up uh, like getting the killer kind of close to her. Jesse kind of falls backwards onto this branch and so then Chris is like, hey, and then like the killer is like, huh? And then Chris ends up letting go of the branch, smacking this killer and having him fall onto uh, the grassy grounds to where eventually the other killers are just kind of checking on this guy. And they're just kind of angry because it, they uh, they had gotten to this uh, killerish thing or whatever. So. Eventually, what ends up happening is that eventually Jesse and eventually Chris are to continue to try and uh, eventually uh, make it through the uh, forest to eventually have Jesse eventually getting taken and eventually being brought back to uh the killer's home where eventually now chris is going to go back for her and to try and save her and so what ends up happening is jesse is to be tied up onto this bed uh naturally assuming that she's gonna get a knife to the throat soon but then all of a sudden we end up having chris who ends up taking one of these cars and driving it through this home which all of a sudden is to start this home ablaze. And so uh, we end up having Chris trying to quickly uh, untie Jesse to eventually have to kind of uh, kind of give her like a free hand for her to untie her own self. And so now Chris is kind of like uh, doing the like if you guys remember the first Ninja Turtles movie where like Michelangelo is uh, to be in April Neal's home and like the foot soldiers have these like weird ax looking things and he's just kind of like rolling back and forth to eventually avoid uh, 
like these axes coming for him. So Chris is kind of doing the same thing, kind of doing this like role where he's trying to avoid getting hit by this weird, these axes and whatever. So eventually Chris is to be trying to fight these things off. Eventually Jesse is to find this one bow and arrow and she ends up going and shooting uh, one of these guys. So eventually it just gets to where eventually one by one these hill hillbilly ash like characters end up seemingly getting killed off to all of a sudden eventually have both chris and jesse wanting to make sure all these characters are dead because they end up seeing this like gasoline uh uh gasoline container and so they end up shooting the gasoline container to blow up this house and so you end up just seeing these two characters just thrusted uh like away from this explosion uh because of how like bleh, like it really just kind of uh jockeyed them from where they were kind of like just thrusted them uh from where they were and so really i guess that leads to all these characters ending up getting killed off for both chris and jesse to just drive off in the killer's vehicle uh, which is kind of this uh, uh, God, what is the right word? Uh, truck that is to kind of pull other kind of vehicles. I don't know the exact terminology. Um, but anyway, so they end up driving off back to this gas station to go and take this map and rip it from off the gas station to then eventually just head on home because they're like dude no one else is gonna fall for this thing ever again uh because it's a lie that this guy is weirdly feeding to everybody um and you would have thought because these people were to have gotten tricked by this guy that maybe that they would have killed this guy off but coincidentally they didn't so with that said uh that ends up kind of covering this movie uh, there's some, there's some parts about this movie that I did enjoy because it felt very unique, but I think that's all that I have left to say about Wrong Turns. So I'm going to get out of here. Bye, buddy. Bye, buddy.